My um, friend and my guest is Bruce Erickson from Purdue. Hey, Bruce, good morning. Good morning. <laughs> There's so much to talk about, so you're going to have to talk fast because okay. um, big question, big topic, demystifying AI's role in agriculture. So I know you have some thoughts on this. Um, just kind of jump in everywhere sure. you want, and we'll kind of go from there. Well, I think I think the reason, and I, I wanted to do this, and, and I did volunteer to do this, you which did. I, I, yeah, it's I can't believe I did. It's too late now but. to back out. <laughs> so uh, I've been on sort of this mental journey with artificial intelligence, and I've been involved in precision agriculture now since the mid-1990s, from really the beginning of what digital agriculture is. And... Uh, I've seen the various waves of things and the new thing, and then we all run toward that new thing, and uh, it's all very exciting, but there's often a disappointment involved in that too. So uh, a few years, big data, and then we had uh, internet of things, and then mm -hmm. we've all been switching over from culture. We're talking more data science in recent years, and so... I really had to understand uh, what artificial intelligence was. Yep. And uh, I, I guess me, at a Purdue presentation, I expressed frustration with that. And, and uh, they are data people. We, we had some meetings that followed that. And I'm with this new institute uh, that's based at the University of Minnesota, too. I have a sub-grant from them. It's right. one of the NSF-funded artificial intelligence things, and we're working on AI with climate. And so uh, I really figured, you know, if I'm getting a half a million dollar grant on artificial intelligence, I should probably know what this stuff is. But it really bothered me how poorly defined AI was, yeah. and I wanted to get to the bottom of it. Yeah. And, and so uh, thus my journey, 40 days in the desert, um, you know, <laughs> to try to... Uh, seek an answer to, to what AI actually really was, is. What kind of things are you learning? Because I was actually going to uh, do some welcome remarks of my own uh, here at Tech Hub Live. And, uh, you know, how do you even get your arms around how fearful <laughs> should we be? So, so, so you know, with this uh, AI group that I'm, that I'm a part of that's hosted by the University of Minnesota, we have like... Uh, weekly meetings and there are scientists that present their results of artificial intelligence and i'm dumb enough to comment after these it's like well i'm sorry this is a good presentation but i really didn't understand what you were talking about it's at a really high level so i needed to understand it at my own level of experience and and like when you're teaching i've done a lot in my life you need to put it in the context of the learner and mm -hmm. and so they, that's what they were not doing and so I started asking them, is AI for dummies? And, you know, there maybe is perhaps that, but uh, which is why we're working with them. They, they've been working on this AI stuff for the science department for a long time. And uh, they recommended some books. I started looking at them and I didn't like them, but finally came across this book called The History of Artificial and it's very insightful because it puts AI in the context of history and world events and everything. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that really helped me a lot was to know some of this perspective of artificial intelligence. And again, I know as a teacher, you need to put things uh, in such a way that the learner understands it. And, and so something that really caught my eye um, you know, when does something become artificial intelligence? Is a is a Google search art, artificial intelligence? I suppose it could be. That's doing. Uh, you know, you can't search do a search online as a human and come up with hundreds, thousands of results by yourself. I mean, right. that's artificial right. intelligence in some form or another, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But there's this thing that is called the Turing test that really mm -hmm. grabbed my eye. And this test originated in 1950, five zero, which is like, wow, in 1950, they were working on this stuff, which is just shocking. And of course, uh, artificial intelligence didn't really come to be in those days because we didn't have the computational ability in the 1950s. Mm -hmm. I mean, our PC computer now, the brain power would take, you know, a computer as big as this room, perhaps, to do the computation, you know, that's maybe in my iPhone right, right. now. So. Right. The Turing test and what they were doing back in those days is that 
they said it's artificial intelligence if when you get done with something, you can't tell the product of artificial intelligence from something that a human created. Like if we have voice recognition software or something that creates something, and a, a group of people cannot tell the difference between that creation and something that was uh, created, you know, compare something a computer created thing or a people created thing, mm -hmm. then that's true artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so tell me a little bit more, and in, in, I'm glad you mentioned the grant. Uh, right. And that was announced last year. Right. Correct? Um, tell us a little bit more about that, the work that you're going to be doing with that. Um, what, what's on the table there? So one of the nice things uh, about artificial intelligence is that it's going to allow us to perhaps do some stuff that we can't already do. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And so uh, we're stuck in agriculture in some ways with some of our capabilities, like the nutrient management thing. I'll, I'll just say, and this may not be popular with some listeners, but we're still following recommendations that were made you know, many years ago. And we know that there are still big environmental problems. And we know that it's difficult to set the rates of nutrients and all that kind of stuff. We've made incremental progress. But frankly, if we're going to move into the future, we need to have revolutionary progress, uh -huh. Uh -huh. not just incremental. And so uh, that's one thing that we're doing in this institute. Then uh, we're trying to solve some of those nutrient management and carbon sequestration uh -huh and ways that we can farm better. And we think that artificial intelligence may offer some solutions for that kind of thing. Because uh -huh. Uh -huh. everyone knows, like, uh, if you're trying to be a better steward of the land, yes, we're doing cover crops. Uh, yes, we're doing less tillage. And yes, we're trying to manage our nutrients better. But in some cases, we're not quite doing enough in all those uh -huh. cases. You can use a cover crop and you can reduce your tillage and we need to be releasing less carbon into the atmosphere. But even with multiple practices, we're not doing there enough to be able to help with our climate change situation in the future. We need bigger answers. Mm -hmm. And so we're hoping that artificial intelligence can help solve some of those things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what you guys are working on um, with the Institute and, you know, the scientists and the teachers, if you will, Right. So the students, I mean, you know, you're here, you're here at an event, you know, where we have the retailers and farmers and all the folks from the ag space. Um, how important is it or how um, best to kind of inform the industry and the people that are actually doing it? Hey, we're working on this. And why, why does it matter? Is there like that? We always talk about that disconnect between academia and everyone else in the world. Yeah. And Laura, so that's one you, of the... And that's one of the things that. that's been bothering me, too, about this. And, and I, I guess I let things bother me too much. But uh, I, I see AI uh, being like people, companies making customers think that they're actually doing AI when they maybe aren't doing AI. I mean, it's oh. a great marketing ploy to, to do yeah. this type of thing. Yeah. But at the same time, uh, I think from a customer standpoint, the most important thing that uh, – we that we'll be doing is that probably most of the artificial intelligence will occur behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. This will be a tool that a farmer can use that will do things a little bit better. Mm -hmm. I know like in plant breeding, it's you our plant breeders uh, right. at Purdue in that you'll have better genetics and, and better traits and those kind of things. And, and that will be delivered in a bag of seed to a farmer or a bulk unit that's always been delivered the same way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so the thing that I guess I see uh, with retailers is to maybe be uh, a little more leery of, of things or a little more suspicious. And we already are. You know, this is the age of misinformation. Yeah. <laughs> Don't we know? I mean, yeah. uh, it seemed discerning like we were. <laughs> yes, we need to be even more discerning because I get fooled all the time about, uh, you know, advertisements and things and and we just need to make sure that. Yeah, that's a good, good way to end this up. Yeah. Make sure things are real. Oh, we're done already, huh? <laughs> and on Sorry. that note. Okay. Thank you so much, you, Bruce. Laura. Appreciate it. Always good to see you. Thanks for being here. Yeah, thanks a lot. I always enjoy this conference. Thank you.